All right, now we want to consider the last type of hypothesis test. So this is a hypothesis test on the mean when sigma is not known. And so um, this is a problem. I basically just took the last problem and I doctored it a little bit. So the values are the same, but now we have the, the mean weight and the standard deviation both from the sample. So in a sample of 35 penguins, the mean weight was this, the standard deviation was this. I also changed the nature of the test. So I said at a, at a 0.05 significance level, can we reject the null hypothesis that the mean penguin weight is less than last year? Most hypothesis tests are, are one-tailed, okay? There are times when we do two-tailed tests, but, um, and, and, this, and this could be an example. So I'll, I'll just tell you very quickly how you might think this. Uh, suppose, for example, you're interested in people putting pollutants into the, into the environment. So PCPs, for example, are, are things that, uh, um, I'm sorry, PCBs are um, polychloro, uh, um, um, polychlorinated, uh, I forget the rest of it, um, but these are chemicals that essentially can, can cause sex changes in animals. Okay, and so um, polar bears, for example, are, are affected by these. And um, so you might not know how it's going to affect the weight. It might cause the penguins to become lighter or become heavier. So there you might not know. But uh, very often in business, we know which way it's going. So I wanted to do one like this. The book does very few uh, one, one tail tests. And what I'm going to do because the mathematics is actually very, very similar. I'm going to cut and paste everything I did from last time. And we're just, we're just going to um, change a few things here and there. So the given information is pretty much the same. The only thing that changes here is the fact that this is now the sample standard deviation. Okay. Now, the hypotheses, of course, are going to change, too, okay? Because here, we want to test and see if, so remember, the, the alternative is what we're testing. We're testing to see if it's less than. So here, the alternative, which is what we're testing, is that it's less than, and this is that it's greater than or equal to. Okay. So this is a lower one tail. We're testing below the mean. So this is a lower one-tailed test. It just does not want to do that, does it? Lower one-tailed test. Okay. Now notice that everything's going to be the same as far as the test statistic. The test statistic is computed the same way. Um, notice that, um, well, let me, let me go ahead and compute it from the beginning. The only thing that's going to differ is that sigma is not known. So I'm, I'm going to have to compute um, the estimated standard deviation of x bar, because I don't know what the true is, so I'm, I'm estimating it, right? So now this is going to be equal to, but it's going to be computed the same way. Instead of sigma, I'm now just going to use s and divide it by the square root of n. So remember, just like for the confidence intervals, whenever we don't know the standard deviation, we swap s for sigma, right? And we had that. Okay. And we got the same value. That's not going to change. And so this is our test statistic, okay? Um, and let me just format that real quickly. So our, our test statistic, again, I'm, I'm going to compute it from the beginning, but it's going to be exactly the same. It's just going to be equal to x bar minus mu naught divided by standard, the estimated standard deviation of x bar. And I get the same, the same value. So again, it, it's around 1.9. Let me format that real quick. Okay. Now here's the, here's the part that's a little tricky. We want to compute the p-value. Um, okay, we actually cannot say that it's normally distributed because we don't know sigma. However, um, when, this, when it's greater than or equal to 30 and the distribution is somewhat symmetric, the central limit theorem tells us that the test statistic is distributed like a t 
random variable with n minus 1 degrees of freedom. Okay, It's really not the central limit theorem, but there's a theorem that's actually more powerful than the central limit theorem that takes care of this. So when the, set, when, the, when the sample size is greater than or equal to 30, and as long as it's not really too skewed, then this is the distribution the test statistic has. Okay, and let me just put this in. Um, and the distribution of x is not too skewed. Then we can say that this is true. So now I can compute the p-value. Because so remember what the p-value is. The, the for a one-tailed test, the p-value is the percentile. So for a one-tailed test, um, the p-value is just going to be the percentile. And we have to be careful. It's either going to be the upper, upper or lower percentile, depending on whether the test statistic is above zero or less than zero. Okay, so here it's, it's going to be less than zero, so it's going to be just the, just the percentile. So it's going to be the percentile for the test statistic when the test statistic is less than zero. And it's going to be the upper percentile. Let me just add a thing here. So it's going to be the upper percentile when the test statistic is actually greater than zero. But we don't have that case for our problem. So remember, we're going to have to use t dot um, inv here, right? because we're starting with a, a test statistic. And our degrees of freedom are going to be the sample size minus 1. And, and actually, I wanted, um, I wanted t dot dist because I, I, want a, I want a percentile. So that's right. I'm computing the, the percentile here. And it's going to be cumulative because a percentile is, is cumulative. Okay, so there is my there's my p value. Now I apply my decision rule. Is p less than alpha? Yes. So I'm going to reject the null hypothesis. testing at a 5% significance level, which is norm normally going to be the case. When it's not stated, we're going to assume that's true. Okay, now, now we're ready for our conclusion. So we're going to just morph this back into regular English and say at a significance level of 0.05, we conclude that the average weight of the king penguins is less than Okay, so basically we're concluding the alternative hypothesis. And I just just move this up here. Oh yes, please. Sometimes it'll be nice and let you move it and sometimes it won't. Maybe I have to do this. Here we go. Okay, and we're done. So that, that's all there is to it. So when we don't know the standard deviation, the population standard deviation, we just use the sample standard deviation, and that's going to change the standard deviation of x bar to the estimated standard deviation of x bar. But it's not going to affect how we how we calculate the the test statistic. Okay, instead of the standard deviation of x bar, we just have the estimated, but it's computed the same way. And the only other difference is our p value is going to have to be computed using the t-distribution. And that's pretty much it.